Okay, so we have our T-Rex uh, in Maya, and I can compare that to the T-Rex that I have in ZBrush, and I can see that the ZBrush one is obviously way more detailed, right? Um, this T-Rex that I currently have here is, um, see how many polygons? Uh, well into the millions. Looks like this guy's 8.8 .8 million. Um, and you might be saying, well, let's produce a normal map from this. But the problem with that is that we would only get basically the scales and these spikes that stick out um, would not show. And a good way to kind of see that would be to go to the material, go to flat color. And I can see that if his um, silhouette is changed, I'm going to need a displacement map to kind of like um, show that in Maya. So how are we going to get all this detail from here into Maya? Well, we need to create what's called a displacement map. So the way that I'm going to do that is, first of all, I'm going to take my uh, subdivision and put it all the way to level 1. Okay, and actually if I go to the highest subdivision level, I can see that his highest is, um, looks like 12 million. Okay, so I'm going to put this at level 1. And there's two places that I can make a displacement map. I can come down here and I can make a displacement map. And you have kind of a minimal um, choices there. Or I can come up here to Z plugin and I can go to multi map exporter. So I'll put this guy at the lowest subdivision level. And once again, under geometry, he's at level one. And then if I go into Z plugin, and multi map exporter. Here it is. And now you can see that I can choose displacement, vector displacement, normal, all this other, other stuff. I'm just going to focus on displacement right now. So I'm going to choose displacement. And for my export options down here, I can go and choose displacement map. And now I can see all my settings for this. So I can see that if I come in here, he has seven subdivision levels. So if I go back here, and I might tear this off. I might go, um, I'll just dock it on this side. Um, I can see that I'm going to put this to seven subdivision levels. I'm going to, um, I'll turn this off. I'll leave it at 32-bit and EXR. EXR is a obviously a 32-bit um, image that holds significantly more color information. Um, instead of just 256 shades of a color, um, it holds a decimal point, so it's literally millions of more color. So it's going to be a lot more detail. Um, but it'll be a bigger file. And then if I go to File Names, okay, here's where I can change the naming convention. And I'm actually using UDIMS. Okay, so I'm going to click on this one here, UDIM. And if you're asking, well, what, what is a UDIM? If I go back to Maya here, um, if I go to UV Editor, I can see that this guy has, he's using more than this 0 to 1 space. Okay, normally we put all of our stuff in this quadrant, but you can see that he has multiple quadrants. Um, if yours just has this quadrant, you don't have to worry about this step. But if yours has more than that, you're going to have to... Um, be mindful of the naming convention. So I just uh, UV tile format UDIM. And you can see that it automatically tags it here. Um, and I'll just go ahead and leave this alone and click OK. And then I'll say uh, export, OK, create all maps. And once again, this pops up. And I'm going to just put it into the source images. And I'm going to call this um, T-Rex Displacement. And I'm going to click Save. And I can see that the map size is 8192. So you can see that the pre-selected sizes uh, go from 512, 1024, 2048, 4096, you know, the commonly used ones. But if you want to go bigger, 
Um, the largest size I believe you can export is an 8K map, which is 8192. Um, it will take more time. It'll take more time to render, but it'll be significantly more detail. And this is a little overkill. I've got um, five UV maps at 8K size on this guy. Um, but um, if your computer can handle it, the more detail, the better. So I'm just going to let that work, and you can see up here the process. I'll pause the video and get back. Okay, and there it is. I can see that uh, these are the five maps that it produced. Um, once again, five maps because I have five quadrants on this guy. So that's why there's five maps. And um, I can see that they're EXR format, and I can see that they're tagged 1001. That corresponds with the first quadrant. 1002 is the second quadrant, and so on and so forth. So if I go back here, and if I click on this, I can see that this quadrant, if I look really close, is called 1001. And this one is actually called 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. So there's a very particular naming convention that Maya likes that it tagged it with that name. And why did it tag it with that name? Well, that's because in the export options, um, on the file names, and you can see that it took a minute 43 seconds to make the maps. On the file names, um, when I set it to UDIM, it automatically tagged it with those. And that's going to be important later when I get into Maya. So let's actually jump into Maya right now. So I'm going to go back to Maya. And now let's see how we apply these maps to our character. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, and it's going to be a little bit more complicated because, or it's going to seem like it should be more complicated because I have, um, you know, five maps that I have to put on this single mesh. Notice that he's not multiple pieces other than his teeth and his uh, tongue, which I'm, aren't considered in the maps right now. Okay, it's just his skin. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and hold, go down to assign new material. And this pops up. I'm going to go to Arnold Shader AI Standard Surface. Okay, great. Now, here's uh, this pops up over here. And if it takes me to the, a different tab, I'm just going to scroll all the way over and go here. I'm going to call this T Rex underscore material. Okay, great. And now, you might look through all of this stuff. And you're looking for, where am I going to plug in my displacement map? And the thing is, is that you're not going to find it here. Okay. And if I go into the hypershade, this will kind of help illustrate what's going on. So I'll bring the hypershade over. And in the hypershade, if I click on the T-Rex material and click on the input-output connections, this, and I know this is kind of weird right now, but this is the material itself. So think about this as all of what we're seeing here. And then there's this weird thing sitting over here. And this is what's called the shader group. Um, I think about it like this. Anything that we plug into the material, so if we plug in like a color or um, a roughness or something like that, we're actually going to really see that update in the viewport. But if we plug in stuff to the shader group, we're not going to see any updates in the viewport. We're only going to see updates at render time. And a displacement map is one of those things that needs to um, be activated only at render time. So a way that we can get to that is one of two ways. If, I, um, if I'm in the material of the T-Rex, I can click on this button here. And that's going to bring me to the shader group. And if you kind of look at that, what's happening is if I go to the material, you can see that this icon, it's a square with an arrow that's saying, hey, it's going to bring you to its output connections. And I can see that its output connection is the shader group. 
or if I click on this, it's going to automatically bring me to the shader group as well. So I'm just going to go, or if I see a tab up here, I can see that there, there's the shader group of the material. And now I can see that there's a place that where I can put the displacement. So the pl displacement material can go right here. I'm going to click on that, and this will pop up. I'll go to File, and this will pop up. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I'm going to click on where it says displacement. And I'm going to go find the file. And now I have five files. I'm just going to click on the first one and click open. OK. And EXR, uh, I'm going to make sure the color space is set to raw. And under color balance, alpha is luminance is checked. OK, good. Um, and if I want to see the updated file here, I can click on this, and sometimes it gives me a preview. OK, that's the preview there. Um, now what? Um, well, I need to plug in those other four maps for a total of five. So the way that I'm going to do that is here is my UV tiling mode. If I click on this, I'm going to say U UDIM, okay, which is MARI-based. I'm going to click on UDIM. And I can click on Generate Preview which it's not going to show because, like I said, a displacement is not going to show in the viewport. And you can see that it found the five tiles. Okay, Why did it find the five tiles? That's because our special naming convention it just knows that these are the tiles that are needed. Okay, And they know where to go specifically because of that naming convention. If we renamed this, like this um, 1001, if we rename that to another number, it wouldn't find those tiles. Uh, you could rename the beginning of it, but just don't rename the end of it. OK, great. So now, we to test it to see if it worked, if I go to Arnold up here, if I just render it out right now, it's going to be solid black because there's no lights in the scene. So I'm just going to go down here to Lights, Sky Dome Light, and that's going to put a globe around the T-Rex, and if I zoom out, that's basically the light, okay? And if I want to see this, if I go to um, Arnold, open Arnold Render View, okay? And let's look at it kind of in a live render view to see how it works. Now, a displacement is a little bit more involved than um, other ones. You might have to kind of fiddle with it a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up the render view here and take a look at it. OK, with the render view open, I'm going to click on the play button. And because I have the Arnold light in there, it should be enough to light up the scene. And I um, just need to let this think a little bit. Okay, so after some time, I can see that uh, here it is. And if I go to Window, 3D Manipulation, I should be able to kind of rotate around in my render view. Okay, now I can see that, yes, I, I am getting the detail on here, but it looks like it's not like sticking out as I would expect it to. So what I'm going to do here is I need to make some adjustments to this model. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the model, and in the Shape tab in the Attribute Editor, and if you don't have the Attribute Editor, it's this icon here, or you can click on Control a um, Go into the Shape tab, and then come down here to Arnold, um, and then scroll down, and there's this Displacement Attributes area. And if I open this up, um, this scalar zero value, I'm going to put that to 0.5. Okay, and basically what that means is that are the gray values um, considered uh, basically like ground zero, or is the black considered ground zero? And then it grows up from that. Um, and so black would be pushed in and white would be pushed up if gray is your neutral um, zone. And 
depending on how it's set up in ZBrush, I believe ZBrush is saying that the gray is the neutral zone. So I'm going to put that to 0.5 right there. And then height, I can bump this up. And I could kind of play with this. Okay, that's looking kind of bizarre. Let's put that to 10, and you can start to see that it's getting a little screwy. Uh, I'm going to put that back to 1. And if I go to, once again, material attributes, um, okay, because here's also the um, scalar value here, um, and I believe I only need to change it in one of the areas, otherwise it's kind of doubling up. So. And it looks like I, I still need to make a few more adjustments. And the other thing, too, is that, um, oh, I know what I need to do here. So I need to go back into, um, if I click on this, into the Shape tab, Subdivision, right here. I have to say, yes, this does have subdivisions. Okay, so I'm going to go here to Cat Clark. And I'm going to say that it has seven iterations, because it had seven subdivisions in... Um, in ZBrush and now it's thinking so what that's saying is this in ZBrush you can see that I had uh, seven subdivisions and what Maya is doing is saying well at render time I have to theoretically divide the mesh seven times and then calculate the displacement to push out all the detail. So now it should be able to um, push that out. Let me let me push this, um, and I can see that it's thinking. I I don't, I don't think that. I mean, it's going to be all blowing out with uh, the height too high. Hold. So let me just let this catch up. Okay. It took a little bit of time, but I just I brought the iterations down to six to speed it up a little bit, and the height is back to one, and I can start to see that my uh, silhouette is being displaced, okay, as it should be. Um, the other thing I want to do here is I'm going to add a light in the scene. It's going to be easier for me to see if this is actually working. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go to Create, Lights, Spotlight, and now I'm going to go to Panel, Look Through Selected. As long as the light is still selected, now I can kind of uh, move it like this because I, I am the light here, and I'm going to kind of go like that. Anything inside the light is going to be illuminated. And then I'm going to go Panels, Perspective, go back here. And if I zoom out, I can kind of see that that's where my uh, light is, my physical light. Okay, there we go. I just zoomed it up. And I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. There we go. Excellent. So, and I might as well select this light, but go back to uh, perspective and then kind of come back in here. And um, I'm going to make this environment darker. So I'm going to put this like to point 0.1, and that's the sky dome. And then I'm going to select the light so if I go into my um, my outliner, I can select my light, and I'm going to put this light up to like 100,000 or even um, a million. And there, I can start to see that I've got a really good um, displacement happening in Maya. Okay, so you can see all of that, all of those um, spikes and everything. I feel like this the equivalent is pretty good um, to ZBrush. So hopefully that was helpful, and um, I feel like displacements are a little bit tricky. Um, and I can see that, unfortunately, it looks like where my seams are, I do have a little bit of um, problem there. And um, in maybe another video, I'll kind of show how to clean that up.